we are here in module 3 uh, in fact the second subheading of module 3 and today we will be talking about uh, earthing and lightning protection system right in our previous session we have uh, seen what a switch gear is how complicated or how uh, uh, the you know the switch has evolved into so many uh, have taken or accommodated several advancements and how it became a switch gear and what is the application of switch gear and we moved on to uh, fuses, uh, circuit breakers and various types of circuit breakers, right? So uh, those belonging to the protection uh, devices now, we are extending our protection strategy to something further which is earthing and lightning protection system. Uh, so the <coughs> under this module we'll be seeing the definition, purpose, uh, types of earthing system, what the factors which affect uh, the earthing systems and uh, system specification and the type of soil, water table, resistivity, etc. Right. So, uh, and also about uh, uh, new advances in earthing system. Uh, lightning system design factors affecting the system specification and uh, basic rules as per standards. Moving on, we will start with earthing. So, what is earthing? <coughs> Most of us uh, vaguely or uh, have our own definition of earthing. The process of transferring immediate discharge of electrical energy directly to the earth with the help of a wire which obviously has to be a flow resistance. The electrical earthing is done by connecting <coughs> the non-carrying, non-current carrying part of the equipment or the neutral supply of the system to the ground. The earthing provides simple path to the leakage current. The short circuit current of the equipment passes to the earth which has zero potential thus or thereby protecting the system and equipment from damage with all these three definitions uh, what we can understand is so uh, we've been talking about current as a movement of electrons so we've been talking about uh, these movement of electrons if they go in the, in the intended path <coughs> and circuit the complete the circuit it is going to be of help to us, uh, help to us in terms of producing the current if they miss on the particular intended path and if they start uh, wandering around in the circuit or uh, in a different circuit or uh, for that matter even uh, to some other objects which promotes the passage of electrons and that is going to result in a serious damage. So how do we guide these electrons back to the circuit? Uh, in other uh, is what we've been trying to understand in the previous lectures that we have to avoid short circuit and all that but right now when we talk about earthing we are concerned about guiding these electrons back to the earth itself that being good conductor of electricity so that they get in there so uh, they are by preventing or protecting our equipment and the circuit system right so with this understanding if we have to move on further so there are two types of earthing that we should be knowing one is neutral earthing as you could see the next one is equipment earthing neutral earthing the neutral of the system is directly connected to the earth with the help of wire uh, this neutral earthing is also called as a system earthing provided in generator transformer applications idea is to isolate the system under fault conditions to limit the potential difference between conductors which are not insulated in an area and to limit limit the occurrence of over voltages under various conditions Equipment earthing is a type of earthing which is provided to the electrical equipment, the non-current carrying part of the equipment like their metallic frame which is again a conductor is connected to the earth by the help of conducting wire. If any fault occurs in the apparatus to pass the short circuit current to pass the earth by the help of the wire, thus protect the system from damage. So new uh, equipment earthing is something which uh, has to protect the equipment because if there is a leakage of current to the any other conductor for example even metal case we might have metal case in many of our appliances if there is any current in that so there has to be uh, uh, there has to be a means of uh, taking guiding those electrons back to the earth so when you connect the non current carrying part of the equipment to the earth with the help of a conducting wire so that they are safe from these electrons which move around thereby protecting the equipment as well as somebody who is going to get in uh, contact with that neutral earthing is when we have to directly connect the neutral of the system or the uh, uh, circuit to the earth right 
so that uh, when when in case we've been talking about circuit short circuit and all so when there is some electron which is still wandering in the circuit without knowing where to go or if there is any leakage within the circuit system as well so <coughs> in such cases we connect the neutral directly to the earth right moving on further so uh, why I, I think this uh, most of us will be knowing what is the necessity why do we have to earth be it neutral earthing or equipment earthing why do we have to do that so the main benefits of grounding include protection from over voltage over voltage is when we have more number of electrons getting in the capacity becomes more due to the supply or various other factors uh, in such cases these electrons have to be shown have we have to show their way to them in such cases yes we uh, have to make some arrangements so that we have an answer to these electrons stabilization of voltage and uh, prevention from injury damage and death right so over voltage stabilization of voltage or uh, and or prevention from etc etc is because of the electrons which you are talking about right and every metal cased electrical equipment should be efficiently connected to earth for a simple fact that it is going to act as a conductor right to drain away any leakage of current due to poor insulation because in some cases where uh, the wire is poorly the cables are poorly insulated they might move they, they will have a change of uh, you know they might jump on from one atom to another atom in such cases how do you uh, drain them out right and uh, obviously because Indian electricity rule number 61 says is that we have to earth moving on further so this is a, a borrowed image that I have here so so this is the circuit we have this live wire if you could imagine the three wires that we've been talking about uh, earth live and neutral so one the red you see here is the live wire and the green is the earth wire and the neutral is the black wire right so in this <coughs> if you see these uh, live wire is getting on to an equipment and the neutral is also coming on uh, the other end of the equipment is connected to a neutral wire and if there is any foreign object which is coming in contact who is establishing a direct connection with the earth they are getting used as a conductor for these electrons or electricity to pass through so this is without the system getting earthed so i'll show you next image where the equipment is earthed right this circuit is earthed of course the circuit here is earthed so that we always have an answer that we have earth to circuit and we always have a neutral so, so this if there is any fault if the, imagine if this equipment is switched off so if there is any fault we always have an answer on these electrons which are wandering around or if there is any leakage they are arrested they are taken down to the ground whereas the equipment over here is not earth so if there is any uh, wandering electrons over here in this equipment so they have to be earth so that is why we did uh, an equipment or thing here so that these electrons uh, which is using the metal case as, an, as a conductor to move around are actually earth so that they don't affect anybody else who is coming in contact with the uh, with them with the planes at least but uh, all sudden then it is to be it is not to be assumed that if we uh, earth the equipment we are completely safe this is one means of uh, of preventing or protecting as or any other foreign object which uh, comes in contact with the uh, equipment so but yes so this I think gives a big idea of why do we have to earth our systems right so we've been talking about fault now okay so what is a fault so fault is an is in electrical equipment or apparatus is defined as an imperfect imperfection in the electrical circuit due to which current is deflected from the intended path. So I told you in the first, uh, very first uh, second slide. Uh, <coughs> so imperfection is uh, uh, achieved in the circuit due to which current is deflected from the intended path. That means electrons are moving in the, not moving in the path uh, in which that, in which we wanted them to move, right? The fault is the abnormal condition of the electrical system which damages the electrical equipment and disturbs the normal flow of electric current. So uh, we have come to this page where I again have a couple of borrowed images and we have a text where I tell you I have indicated three arrows for you to make a quick guess if you again have to look at the uh, uh, image you can 
easily notice that uh, I am just going to uh, tell you what is already there. So there are three components of any earthing system which is uh, even the uh, present ones which are relatively advanced and what we are going to see in the next slides also work based on these uh, idea and uh, <coughs> concept. The first is the electrical earth continuity conductor which is connecting the appliance or the circuit to the earth right next is earthing lead which is connecting the circuit from the connecting point to something else third is the electrode that is going to be buried in, inside the ground under the ground right so one is earth continuity conductor which is this second is the earthing lead which is this third is the electrode by itself right so if you have to again uh, try if you have to quickly crack this image uh, down a bit so we have all this coming in which is the usual part of our circuit which is our earth wire and there's a connecting point and this is one way of uh, connecting it and from then we have earthing lead which goes down to the plate so if you have a question of why can't this directly go there there are several answers so some, if some somebody uh, can guess it is about he spoke about this particular wire which is going to take the electrons have to have uh, relatively less resistance than this and that's why we have something else here and finally we have the plate which can distribute the electricity or electrons to the ground so this so we are going to see each of these three uh, in a bit more detail earth uh, connect continuity conductor or the earth wire so again imagine uh, remember the three uh, plug points that we've been talking about this is going to be green like i told you that this is going to be green that is going to be live and black is going to be our uh, neutral so now what is being displayed in the slide is a green wire so that automatically tells us that it is part of the earthing uh, it is part of our uh, earthing system the main circuit system right i'll just read it out the part of the earthing system which interconnects the overall metallic parts of an electrical installation example conduit ducts boxes metallic shells of the switches, distribution boards, switches, fuses, regulating and controlling devices, metallic parts of electrical machines and metallic framework of electrical devices is known as earth wire or earth continuity conductor. Right? So this is going to be by default part of all the wiring system uh, that we are going to, circuit system that we or uh, our electrical engineer is going to uh, design. Moving on further, second is the earth led. So the earth, ca earth wire comes and stops at a particular place and then this wire comes in which is the earth led. It is going to look something like how it is uh, put up in the slide. The conductor wire, I am going to read it out for you. The conductor wire connected between the earth continuity conductor which is the green wire and the earth electrode which is our uh, plate or whatever medium which we are going to bury underground or the earth plate is called the earthing joint or earthing lead. <clears throat> the point where earth continuity conductor and earth electrode meet is known as a connecting point. I showed you in the slide uh, where uh, we saw the uh, connecting point. So generally copper wire can be used as earthing lead but uh, copper strips can also be used because <coughs> it can handle uh, high fault current because of the wider area that it provides. And the third one is going to be our earthing electrode or earth plate. A metallic electrode or plate is which is buried in the earth and it is the last part of the earth electrical earthing system. Metallic plate, pipe or rod. So we will be studying about the types of earthing in which we will study about uh, this <coughs> end point of the electrical uh, earthing system which again has to have uh, very low resistance and carry fall current safely towards the ground. Usually copper and or iron can be used, metal can be used for this particular purpose uh, which is a, a electrode. It is recommended that we bury <coughs> uh, this earthing electrode in the moisture earth. So it, it is important that we always have to keep this uh, zone completely moisturized and again depending upon where you grew and uh, the type of earthing you must have had, you must have seen your uh, uh, elders, parents or uh, grandfathers, grandparents <coughs> uh, adding, pouring water into the earth pit so that is to keep this entire area moisture. Right? 
the earthing system earth uh, electrode is installed vertically and not horizontally and uh, there is again to keep to keep uh, the uh, low resistance intact and to keep it moisturized they also have about 30 cm layer of powdered charcoal and lime mixture around the earth plate and in this yeah so if this is the electrode that we see the plate in this case this is how we connect and this is where the earth lead will come in stop and then we have this earthing electrode next we move on to uh, the types of earthing there are two types this is going to be a very easy question or area to score marks and uh, from an examination point of view because we're going to be uh, this has got enough uh, or uh, the correct amount of theory with a good set of diagrams the time it is going to take is also relatively good that it always or most of the time qualifies for a question in this particular module so <clears throat> the first is plate earthing and the second one is pipe earthing uh, this name is uh, due to the material so the plate uh, here refers to the electrode and also the pipe in the next type of earthing also refers to the electrode which is buried underground so just because these two components change there will be a set of changes in the way we connect them and the way we maintain them as well we will start with plate earthing in this method a copper plate of 60 by 60 centimeters and a thickness of about 3.18 centimeters or a GA plate of size so when it is a copper it is of different size when it is a GA it is of different size when it is GA the thickness is increasing slightly is used for earthing the plate is placed vertically down like I told you in the previous slide it is going to be inserted vertically down and not horizontally down inside the ground at a depth of minimum 3 meters and is embedded in alternate layers of coal and salt for a thickness of 15 centimeters surrounding the plate right so in addition water is poured for keeping the earth uh, electrode resistance value well below a maximum of 5 ohms so we've been talking about this after our connecting point whatever we have is going to have very less resistance uh, than the circuit that we have <coughs> the earth wire is securely bolted to the earth plate and the one which comes which is a earth plate uh, sorry which earth lead is securely bolted to the earth plate the cement masonry chamber is built with a cast iron cover for easy regular maintenance which is on the ground at the surface of the ground right this is what i was referring to most of us must have uh, seen this happening some in some of our houses depending upon where you uh, lived and what type of houses you lived but yeah it, nevertheless you can start observing for these bits in and around the areas that you live in okay i will quickly see so this is the ground and this is the earth masonry sorry cement masonry structure or chamber that we have uh, been talking about uh, the ca uh, cast iron cover so that this can be lifted and uh, to pour water or for maintenance so this is the only way that only chamber that we can access once when this is buried inside the earth so this is the copper wire that we've been talking about this goes inside this is copper or uh, lead <coughs> uh, uh, this is the earth lead that we are talking about it goes till the plate this till the electrode which is a plate in this case and gets securely bolted to this till here and it is surrounded by this uh, charcoal and salt mixture and there is a provision to take water deep down till there and these dimensions are going to be important because these are as per the standards so it is worth to pay attention to these dimensions and moving on to the next slide so this is a detailed information in terms of uh, how this is connected and we have this chamber and we have more dimensions and specifications happening here there are numerous ways to uh, <coughs> Uh, have this uh, pro uh, uh, water provision provision for taking the water till the electrode so this slide is for you to uh, observe carefully so that uh, uh, you know from an examination point of view so that we will have to uh, draw this as well along with our explanation so next we move on to pipe earthing pipe earthing is uh, just that uh, the major change between the plate and pipe earthing is the electrode over uh, uh, the iron plate thing was uh, a plate over here it is going to be a vertical pipe right so earth electrode made of again GI pipe of 38 millimeter in diameter and length of 2.5 uh, 2.75 meter depending on the current capacity 
width what is important here is this with 12 mm holes on the surface 12 mm holes so we are talking about a 38 mm uh, <coughs> diameter iron pipe with uh, 2.75 meter length or minimum or depending upon the current with 12 point uh, sorry 12 mm holes on the surface is placed again upright at a depth of 4.75 meter in a permanently wet ground so in both the cases it is very important that we have the earth completely moisturized so to keep uh, the value for resistance at a desired level the area surrounding the GA pipe is going to be filled with uh, a mixture of cold uh, and salt the efficiency of the earthing system is improved by pouring water through the funnel periodically the same uh, like how we did in the previous uh, plate earthing system the GA wire uh, of sufficient cross-sectional area run through this 12.7 mm diameter pipe at 60 centimeters below from the 19 mm diameter pipe and is secured properly <coughs> secured tightly at the top so what do we mean by the GA wires so, of, of sufficient cross-sectional area run through 12.7 so so this is what is the earth line we are talking about this 12.7 uh, mm dia GA pipe this is what is going to carry your earth uh, wire and it is going to get secure uh, connected securely connected at the top and from here we have this 19 mm diameter GA pipe and it further goes <coughs> this 15 mm, 15 centimeter it's a space that we are going to give on either sides of this pipe and this 19 mm pipe is going till the bottom and after that is where we are going to have our uh, 38 mm dia GA pipe so basically this is our earth wire coming and stopping here which is from the main circuit system and we have 19 mm GA pipe which is coming and touching our 38 mm diameter GA pipe right so this entire thing is of course uh, covered with the uh, alternate layers of salt and charcoal we move on to the next slide where you can see this in a bit more detail so this is the chamber that we've been talking about we have this funnel arrangement happening here so this is where our uh, pipe comes in sorry earth wire comes in and it is getting uh, secured over here with the help of nuts and from now on it goes down till uh, the 38 <coughs> mm GA pipe and it is extending for a length of 2.5 meters minimum with 12.5 mm holes on the surface and 15 centimeter on either sides of this is filled with alternate layer of charcoal and salt so again this image is for uh, your reference for examination in for an examination uh, uh, point of view and uh, one of the other thing which is getting uh, used in these days is very uh, is called rod i think which is very similar to pipe earthing just that a copper rod with galvanized steel pipe is placed upright in the ground physically or using a hammer the embedded electrodes lens in the earth decrease the resistance of their to a preferred value just that uh, the arrangement is going to be the same just that we have a copper rod with the galvanized steel pipe which is placed under the earth right and uh, so this is this can go along with your uh, text in the exam the characteristics of uh, earthing system so we need to have uh, the material that we are going to use is going to we should be having a really good uh, connectivity so they should be able to uh, handle ca fault currents they should have a pretty uh, good life because for the fact that once when it is buried we can't uh, keep uh, take it out in the name of maintenance they should have low resistance and impedance equipotential bonding the difference between the main circuit <coughs> and which is the uh, incoming and the entire system have to be very less uh, it should not be very uh, prone to it of course when you are underground only you have to keep uh, moisturizing it uh, so we, it has to have a good uh, resistant towards corrosion and it should be electrically and mechanically robust and reliable so standard specification uh, so we have for the standard from uh, indian electricity code but apart from that uh, i have just listed down a couple of points for you so it is uh, <coughs> important to note that an earthing electrode should not be situated close to the building it should be at least 1.5 meters away from your plinth 
and it should have it should be low enough to cause the flow of current sufficient to operate protective relays or blow fuses its value is not constant as it varies with weather because it depends on the moisture but should not be less than one ohm and the earth wire and earth electrode will be of the same material which is to be noted here earth wire and the earth electrode to be of the same material and earthing electrode should always be placed in vertical position inside the pit so that it may be the idea is to make it in contact with different layer different layers of the earth with this said uh, we move on to the next part of this lecture which is the lightning protection uh, so we've protected the system from uh, differences in voltage and current through in the circuit through circuit breakers now we've protected them from earth uh, leakages from towards the earth or the circuit to the uh, earth and now we have to protect them from additional charged particles which is nothing but lightning right so the lightning protection is uh, we are going to protect the building and the uh, equipment from lightning the system for protecting a building against the effects of lightning should include protection of structures which is our structure itself and protection of electrical installations against direct and indirect lightning strokes right the basic principle for protection of an installation against the risk of electrical lightning strikes is to prevent the disturbing energy from reaching sensitive equipment if this is making sense what do you mean by protection we are not going to protect anything as such in terms of uh, you know like how we have been protecting with uh, direct equipments so idea is to prevent the disturbing energy the energy which gets in and which we feel is going to dis disturb the entire circuit or the sensitive equipment that needs to be protected that needs to be guided uh, without them reaching any sensitive equipment so how do we achieve this to capture the lightning current and channel it to the earth via the most direct possible path so you can't have uh, you know 10 km long wire from the point of contact to the earth so whichever is a direct po uh, path possible so we are going to use that path and we are going to introduce something in the top which can capture the lightning current and we are going to channel that into the direct path towards the earth and so that we perform this equipotential bonding of the entire installation right moving on to uh, this i'm not sure if the image is really uh, good but uh, what it says is this is mv supply medium voltage supply and it is being received overhead and we have a control house and it goes underground and it is supplied to the uh, warehouse and it is sup uh, supplied to many other warehouses over here again we have the same thing happening uh, we have sensitive equipments as well in between and it says the phenomena of wave reflection is increasing from length is equal to 10 meters so let's not worry about that what 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 i intend to uh, show in this is and we have this green line which is happening at several intervals which is nothing but surge protection devices so what happens is we have this when you have so much of warehouses all of them are having uh, individual surge protection devices they are taking care of themselves and they are coming down here this is the uh, uh, a lightning arrester which is in the top and it is being directly guided to the channelized to the uh, or say let's say buried to the earth and this is separately earthed as well and whenever the length is more than 30 meters we are talking about a surge protection device right so what is a surge protection device which is nothing but a lightning arrester which can protect our devices from these uh, surges so lightning protection the principle consists in creating one or more preferred impact points which is going to be somewhere on top of the building we are introducing our own strategically introducing our own impact points for a lightning strike using low impedance but it has to be a conductor as well so these then conduct and dissipate the lightning current into the ground this coherent system enables the lightning to be captured and dissipated while providing protection to the structure so idea is so simple that we are going to introduce uh, preferred impact points over here for the lightning to strike which is a good conductor but also has uh, relatively low impedance and resistance and this once when it uh, observes the lightning the current the charge is being channelized to the ground channel to the ground <clears throat> so that we protect the structure under it or it is associated with so there are five types of lightning protection system for structures uh, 
for protecting the structures against lightning. Uh, one is the rods, rod type, one is mesh conductor type, third is catenary wires, fourth is early steamer uh, emission lightning protection system, fifth is protection by natural components. Uh, we will go from bottom up. Protection by natural components is uh, components that have a lightning protection function but we are not installed for this purpose. So sometimes we can uh, do it in such a fashion that uh, <clears throat> you know um, by by design we have a uh, we have an element which is there which is uh, uh, there for a structural reason but uh, that is used which also can house the lightning protection function but are not primarily used or designed for that function right uh, one example if we have to talk about we have let's say a straight uh, in an industry we have a straight structure or a steel column which is of course clad with uh, many other materials or metals for aesthetic purpose so deep inside it is still that uh, metal conductor which is happening right straight uh, from the top till the bottom and in fact it goes till uh, under the ground because of the structural stability so that is not primarily made for a, a what lightning protection or as a device for lightning protection but it is also capable of taking that up moving on to the top one uh, early steamer emission lightning protection system the principle of this is uh, to artificially generate with the aid of ionization device an early upward leader occurring before the natural upward uh, leaders right in order to establish a privileged impact point of the lightning strike so what this means is uh, when I talk about an upward leader or a, a downward leader, so when, when there is a, at the initial stage, when, when there is a lightning, this downward leader goes in a particular direction and uh, it has an impact, it has a tendency to hit anything that uh, it reaches in the, once when it reaches the surface. So once when this downward, downward leader goes and hits the ground, it can hit any object, right? So what happens here is we are going to send an upward leader which senses this downward leader and it it is going to anticipate this downward leader which is coming from the top this upward leader that we have generated uh, from our ionization it is going to meet and so we are initially we are actually uh, introducing the hit point before it reaches the ground so that we, we introduce the object that it is going to hit so that we again uh, <coughs> you know control the impact so the damage that this is going to produce or uh, when it goes down and hits the ground so the damage that we are going to receive is relatively reduced here this is an interesting and innovative technology in the lightning arrester uh, field right and uh, moving on further we are going to catenary wires using a similar principle to that of a mesh cage so before we go to the catenary wires we will see what a mesh conductor is so this is uh, <coughs> uh, meshed conductors uh, derived from Faraday's cage. This is a bit, uh, <coughs> you know, this is a bit interesting if you have to know this. So to, it is going to have uh, meshed conductors all over the structure at, uh, you know, regular intervals in the roofs, in the walls, uh, basically at the perimeter of the structure, right? And whenever there is an impact, these mesh is going to observe the impact and uh, take the current or uh, uh, charge towards the ground right so catenary wires is based on the mesh conductors it is very similar uh, in terms of its principle except that they have mesh but at the same time they are uh, you know they are at a distance from the structure to be protected so catenary wires in electrical terms is nothing but the wires that is used to separate two or three conductors if we have to if I have to tell you, if you have paid attention to the uh, transmission towers where uh, they have three to four hands spreading out on each other and all these three will have an insulator and uh, that is where these overhead cables or overhead lines <coughs> are going to uh, be held at a particular point and uh, these catenary wires are the ones which separates these wires to maintain a distance and also from sagging, right? So the similar uh, set of wires which is used to separate the mesh the mesh conductors from the building from the structure to be protected. So the aim is to avoid aim here is to avoid the lightning current coming directly into contact with the structure. Mesh conductor we saw that rods this lightning conductor is made up of a 2 to 8 meter high tapered metal rods 
drawer that dom dominates the structure to be protected and which is to be connected to a minimum of two down connectors and two earthing system and uh, with this we have completed uh, module 3 uh, i believe some of the topics in module 3 especially is uh, <coughs> very theoretical and we'll have to refer a couple of standards and i have not uh, brushed upon it i leave that to you and uh, <coughs> majorly with this uh, we have covered electrical services as well from module 4 we'll be moving on to illumination and uh, uh, lighting techniques and all that so see you in module 4 thank you